we're going to be looking at the Yamaha DSR 118W subwoofer. And we're going to be looking at the carbon. This is, I'm going to get this model right. It's the SCX 1118A subwoofer. Now, you'll see in the video, I'm not going to edit, re edit the beginning of the video or redo the beginning because I compared at first the subs without any tops. And you'll hear what I, my thoughts were because I want you to hear genuinely what I thought of these. Then I'm going to have what I thought after putting tops because I just literally finished doing tops. Because I thought, you know what, I'm going to just try it and see if I have a different opinion. Watch the video and then we'll get to the tops. This is John Young with the Disc Jockey News. We are looking at some subs today. We've got two subs in the office I wanted to t kind of talk to you a little bit about. We're comparing basically a, a high-end sub to a midline sub today. We've got a high-end, we've got the Yamaha, we have the DSR-118W. Um, big, this is a top-of-the-line sub from Yamaha. Great unit, uh, wood build, very heavy, it's 93 pounds, 800 watt, uh, has a peak of, what is it, let's see, 132 dB. Um, yeah, nice cabinet. We've been playing with this and we really have been impressed with this. But we're comparing it to, and at, at about a thousand dollar price, uh, the map on it's around a thousand, you can find it online. We're comparing this to the Carbon. We're looking at this, hang on, get this right now. This is the SCX 1118A. Uh, there we go. About a six hundred dollar cabinet, so we're talking not quite uh, half, you know, a little more than half the price of the Yamaha. Uh, it's a 700 watt RMS, 1400 peak, uh, gets to 130 dB peak, it's about 70 pounds. Uh, a little bit smaller, you can see that, still a wood uh, wood cabinet. Um, I've been playing with these a little bit here in the, sub, in the office, playing with the subs in the office. And it's really kind of cool, and I want to play some stuff. I've got a song right now set up, and it's putting the exact same signal through both uh, to both speakers. So we're going to listen to them a little bit, and see what we think. First off, we're going to start with the Yamaha. Let me turn that down. So again, I've got the same signal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the, the level knob and I'm going to take it right to the, the 12 o'clock rate. So right now, it's not very loud because I didn't want to A, overdrive that, and B, you know, I want to be able to talk about it. So right now, the Yamaha is running. It's at 12 o'clock and it's just playing. I've got a loop going on here. Now we'll turn that one down. Now we will go to the carbon. It's got to think itself ready. Okay, so this is the carbon we're hearing right now. Now what I'm going to do... Now what we'll do is we're going to take that same loop and we're going to open the volumes all the way up. So now, again, same coming off the board, but now I've got this turn, the levels turn all the way up on this guy. We're on the Yamaha right now. I'm getting a little bit of, I can do some vibration of my steel ceiling on the, uh, in the office here. Okay. And now we're going to turn the gain up on the carbon. Turn them all down. Let's take a look at the back of these two subwoofers. So we're looking at the back of the DSR-118W here from Yamaha. And this, of course, we've got our power in and our switch at the bottom. But basically, it's a pretty simple cabinet. You go in, you've got your outs, your th as far as your ins and your through, you got your right, left, in, and you're through. You've got your level, which we were talking about. You can have the uh, sub as normal, or the polarity, normal or inverted. You have your limit switch, which is kind of cool or light. Protection to kick in to keep it from blowing it, ripping itself apart. And you can disable the LED. Pretty much all the technology built inside this, guy. So really, if you have a staff of DJs, they're not going to mess it up. That's the Yamaha. Now let's take a look at the carbon. On the back of the carbon, we've got the SCX-1118A on this guy. We have a little bit more flexibility with this guy. We've got... You're taking a look, we've got our inputs, of course we've got the quarter, and we have the uh, XLR, and we can bounce to a second. But you notice we only have one input with XLR. We have our in and we have our out. So if a person were going to be uh, bouncing to another cabinet, 
such as if we were coming, we can go to our top speaker from that, or right here we can go with a high pass two quarter inch and go up to our top cabinet if we wanted to do that. Well, let's set that off. And of course, here's our level we were talking about. Uh, we can set this to be a high pass going there, or it can be a through. We've got our, let's see, the, the bypass, we can make it, uh, again, we can send the, the signal, and then we had somewhere here, where am I at here? There we go, we had the ability to change the uh, crossover from 120 or at 80, and we were at 120 with our little test. And they also have the protection, they show you a little clip light, which is a very handy feature for the sub. Now let's kind of take a look at the front just a little bit. So the carbon sub is a nice modern design. I like the little bit of a kind of a curved front. It gives it kind of a neat look. Very clean. Has a little bit of porting going on in the corners. We step over to the Yamaha. And again, it has a very modern look and nice rounded corners. And it has its porting at the bottom. Both of those have speaker pole cups on the top so you can mount your top speakers right on top of the sub eliminating the need for a separate speaker stand so there you saw my review or my my thoughts on these subs now I went and put tops on um, we put uh, two tops on so I did a combination of one top one sub and then two tops with one sub and compared back and forth now and you, you heard me talking about the sound was very, you know, somewhat similar, uh, maybe a little bit more, it felt like a little bit uh, more headroom on the Yamaha, but really there wasn't a, I didn't think there was a ton of difference. Once we put a top to it, night and day difference between the two subs, the carbon, I would say, was a little more boomy. Um, I don't think, uh, I don't think we had as tight of a sound with it. The Yamaha was much tighter, it, it had a, a, a better coupling sound. Whereas I felt like when I was running and I did some adjustments and such, and it was good, don't get me wrong, it was a good sound, but you can definitely tell there's a, there's a quality difference between the two. You know, you know, that's why you're paying almost double the money for the Yamaha over the Carbon. I liked the sound of the Carbon, but for, um, a, a, you know, for like a bar show or something quick and easy and cheaper, I would probably, the Carbon would be a great option for you. Uh, a guy who's starting out, the Carbon would give you a nice sound, but it's a little boomier. It wasn't as tight, which I didn't notice as much when we were playing um, the, the track earlier. And even some other tracks that I played, I didn't notice it without the tops. But once we added the tops, it was a, a tremendous difference between the sound of the two. So I just wanted to share that with you because when you're testing subs and you're out, out in the uh, different places, you need to test them with tops. And ideally, I use the exact same top uh, back and forth so I can get the, the greatest... Uh, comparable sound between the two and be able to compare you know, what I'm hearing between the subs. So, Just a one final thought. Um, actually, there's one more thought I wanted to share with you. The Carbon had a little bit different um, in the back of it. When you plug in, let's, let's look at the Yamaha first. When you plug in, you plug, you come from your board, you plug into the Yamaha, and it has a through. And it's a truth through. Meaning that when you come out of it, it's the full signal going up to the top cap. If you shut the Yamaha off, it's the full signal that's going up and it's still going even if you shut the Yamaha off. So if you happen to blow up the Yamaha, you still have full uh, full pass through going to the top. The level control on the back of the Yamaha only controls the level to the sub. Now, the carbon, when you go in and you pass through and go to the top, um, same does it allows you to do that, but it's the level control on the sub controls the level of both the sub and the top at the same time. So you cannot adjust the sub to bring it up or bring it down without that top being adjusted also. So if you wanted to adjust the, say, bring the sub up a little bit, in essence, you'd bring the top down a little bit in that particular configuration. When, when this is shut off, you don't have any pass-through at all. So that's kind of a little bit different uh, when you're doing XLR in and out on the carbon sub. Is that a deal breaker? No, it's just something you need to be, to be uh, you know, you don't need to understand. Um, this also, uh, the Yamaha can have a uh, right and left in and right and left through. So I could use this easily with a three speaker system. The Carbon isn't designed that way. It has a one in, uh, one XLR in and one XLR out. So you'd run, you could run into this, say if you had a mono signal coming out of your board, you could run into one sub and then you could go to the top, one top, and then you could you know, basically jump from one top to the next top. If again, you had a mono signal coming out of your board. So anyway, I will put links in the description below so you can check these out and we can check out uh, 
yeah, what your thoughts are on the Yamaha or the Carbon Sub. This is John Young with the Disc Jockey News.